All right, hello and welcome to a series of presentations that the General Services Administration and the Environmental Protection Agency has developed for GSA Federal Acquisition Service contractors on the subject of managing greenhouse gas emissions. The GSA and EPA developed these presentations because we want to make sure that our FAST industry partners are aware of a number of recent climate-related executive orders, FAR cases, and other policies that address how greenhouse gas emissions are or may be considered in the federal acquisition process. And to make sure you're equipped with the knowledge and resources you need in case you want to begin taking steps now to track and reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. These presentations are targeted towards fast contractors, but should be relevant to any company doing business with the federal government. My name is Brennan Conway. I am with the General Services Administration in the Federal Acquisition Service of FAS. I am in the Office of Policy and Compliance. Uh, this presentation is being recorded on December 13th, 2021. So please keep that in mind when we're providing time relevant information. I'll probably mention it a couple times throughout the presentation. Uh, just so in case you're listening to this three months from now, you're, you're aware that things may have changed. And before we begin, I would like to introduce GSA Assistant Commissioner Mark Lee to kick us off. Uh, Mark Lee leads the Federal Acquisition Service Office of Policy and Compliance. Uh, the Office of Policy and Compliance plays a leadership role in implementing new executive orders and other policies across fast acquisition solutions and shared services. So Mark has some introductory comments. Please take it away, Mark. Uh, thank you, Brennan. I'm pleased to join you today and kick off this series of presentations about managing greenhouse gas emissions. As you might be aware, the Biden-Harris administration has revitalized the federal government's sustainability efforts and made tackling the climate crisis a top priority. Several new executive orders have established bold policies, priorities, and requirements for federal sustainability efforts to generate new jobs, support communities, and achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Many of these executive orders call for leveraging the purchasing power of the federal government to drive innovation and prioritize action on climate change. The Federal Acquisition Service is the premier provider of acquisition solutions across the federal government. So when it comes to leveraging the acquisition process, we take a leadership role. A great example of how FAS is addressing the client process is the requirement in EO 14008 to green the federal fleet of motor vehicles. FAS is developing an aggressive strategy to deploy clean and zero emission vehicles. This is a huge undertaking with many complex challenges. For example, before electrifying the fleet, the government has to ensure that there is adequate charging station infrastructure in place to support the electric vehicles we buy. Another example of how the federal acquisition process can address the climate crisis is by considering contractor greenhouse emissions as part of the procurement process. This is the topic we're addressing today. As you see in this presentation, the Federal Acquisition Regulation Council has been asked to consider amending the FAR to ensure that major federal agencies' procurements minimize the risk of climate change. FAST has partnered with the Environmental Protection Agency to provide these presentations because we want to make sure that you, our industry partners, are aware of these executive orders, the potential federal acquisition regulation changes, and other policies that impact if and how contractors disclose greenhouse gas emissions, set reduction targets, and report progress towards seizing those reductions. Fast contractors that stay up to date with, with this will be better prepared to comply with new regulatory requirements that apply to them and possibly more competitive at the task order, which means you can win more federal business. After listening, you should be familiar with the current policy landscape regarding greenhouse gas management and federal acquisition, understand greenhouse gas inventory development processes and be able to access environmental protection agency resources, be able to identify opportunities to begin reducing your greenhouse gas emissions. I'd like to thank everyone from the Environmental Protection Agency that contributed their time and expertise to the presentation. When GSA reached out to the Environmental Protection Agency with the idea of this presentation, 
They enthusiastically supported the idea and were ready and willing to participate. So at GSA, we're thankful for them and all the work they do to support the Federal Acquisition Service and our industry partners. Thank you, and I will turn back to Brendan now. Thank you, Mark. So let's get started here. We have a lot of materials, so we package the content into three separate recordings for your convenience. Uh, so the first section, which is what I'm providing right now, is uh, provides an overview of the current policy landscape regarding greenhouse gas management in the federal procurement process. Second recording, provided by EPA's Center for Corporate Climate Leadership, um, who is provided by Mel Melissa Klain specifically, will provide an overview of the GHG inventory development process, which covers things like how to get started, collecting data, quantifying emissions, developing a greenhouse gas inventory management plan, setting a greenhouse gas reduction target, and tracking progress. The third presentation, also provided by EPA subject matter experts, uh, covers practical ways that you can begin reducing your greenhouse gas emissions starting now. So this includes tips on using greener energy, becoming more energy efficient, and manufacturing providing using products that are environmentally preferable, uh, they, meaning they conform to EPA recommended specifications, standards, or eco-labels. So after these presentations, you should be familiar with the current policy landscape regarding greenhouse gas management in the federal acquisition process, understand the greenhouse gas inventory development process and be able to access EPA resources, and finally be able to identify opportunities to begin reducing your greenhouse gas emissions. So Executive Order 14008, entitled Tackling the Climate Crisis at Home and Abroad, was issued in January 2021 and states that the United States and the world face a profound climate crisis. Uh, we have a narrow moment to pursue action at home and abroad in order to avoid the most catastrophic impacts of that crisis and to seize the opportunity that tackling climate change presents. Executive Order 14057, signed on December 8th, just a week before this recording, uh, is entitled Catalyzing Clean Energy Industries and Jobs Through Federal Sustainability and states that the federal government faces broad exposure to the mounting risks and costs already posed by the climate crisis. That executive, that executive order goes on to talk about leveraging the scale of federal purchasing to address the climate crisis states that as the single largest landowner, landowner, energy consumer, and employer in the nation, the federal government can catalyze private sector investment and expand the economy and American industry by transforming how we build, buy, and manage electricity, vehicles, buildings, and other operations to be clean and sustainable. So this slide provides some pretty um, impressive statistics detailing the scale of the government's purchasing power and opportunity to reduce our footprints. And before we jump in, the subject of this presentation is specifically on uh, greenhouse gas management and the acquisition process. So let's provide a quick overview of greenhouse gases, which are gases that trap heat in the atmosphere. Uh, in terms of accounting and reporting, there are three categories of greenhouse gas emissions. There are scope one, which are direct greenhouse gas emissions that occur from sources that are controlled or owned by an organization. So in this case, the federal government, that includes emissions associated with fuel combustion and boilers, furnaces, and vehicles. Scope two are indirect GHG emissions associated with the purchase of electricity, steam, heat, or cooling. And then scope three emissions, which is basically everything else. Uh, these are emissions uh, the scope three emissions are the result of activities from assets not owned or controlled by the reporting organization, but the organizational organization indirectly impacts in its value chain. So this would include services and products that are purchased by the federal government. So this presentation is about the policy environment. So let's start talking about policies, starting with sustainable acquisition statutes in general. Um, so these have been around for some time, actually. Sustainable acquisition is not new. Uh, various statutes have been passed by con Congress going back to the 1970s that have implemented federal sustainable purchasing requirements. 
So this includes purchasing uh, requirements that the federal government purchase products with recovered or bio-based content uh, that are energy or water efficient, uh, or that use substitutes for ozone depleting substances and more. So these statutes eventually get implemented into the federal acquisition system by being codified into the federal acquisition regulation or FAR for short. Uh, sustainable acquisition requirements are in FAR part 23. Uh, a good way to figure out if a specific product is um, or has a requirement in the FAR or some associated recommendation from EPA in terms of a recommended specification standard or eco label. A good tool for doing that is the GSA Green Procurement Compilation. So this tool allows the user to enter in uh, the name of the product or the type of product, and it should bring up any associated uh, sustainable acquisition requirement. So I encourage you to check that out if you're interested in figuring out if a specific product has a requirement. Sticking on the topic of federal acquisition regulation, uh, there actually is currently in the FAR a provision 52223 that touches on greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, FAR provision 52223-22 requires offers that have received seven and a half million or more in federal contracts in the prior fiscal year to represent as part of their offer, as part of their representations and certifications, if the offer does or does not publicly disclose greenhouse gas emissions, uh, and if the offer does or does not publicly disclose a quantitative greenhouse gas emission reduction goal. If the offer does disclose emissions or reduction goals, the offer shall provide the publicly accessible website or websites where the emission or goal is disclosed. So all of this is, uh, this representation occurs as part of SAM.gov, which GSA manages. That's the system for award management. And again, this is part of an offer's representations and certifications. Uh, the provision is optional for offers that receive less than seven and a half million or more in federal contracts in the prior fiscal year. So moving on from what is currently in the FAR to executive orders that have been issued in 2021 that are climate related. So there have been a number of these. Um, you can see here again, this is being recorded on December 13th, as there was a major executive order in this space issued last week. Uh, depending on when you hear this, maybe there might even be more executive orders. So uh, we'll talk about how you can monitor that later in the presentation. Executive Order 14057. Uh, this is the one that was issued on December 8th. It lays out how the federal government will lead by example in order to achieve a carbon-free electricity sector by 2035 and net zero emissions economy-wide by no later than 2050. So this is really about the executive, what the federal government's going to be doing to lead by example. And several sections do touch on how greenhouse gases are managed or considered as part of the procurement process. Uh, starting with section 102, a government-wide goal that the federal government shall use its scale and procurement to achieve net zero emissions from federal procurement. It's in section V of section 102. Section 202 talks about reducing agency greenhouse gas emissions. It states that each agency shall reduce its scope one, two, and three GHG emissions by setting and meeting targets for fiscal year 2030 measured from a fiscal year 2008 baseline. And finally, Section 301 entitled Federal Supply Chain Sustainability states that consistent with applicable law, agencies shall pursue procurement strategies to reduce contractor emissions and embodied emissions in products acquired or used in federal projects. So moving on to Executive Order 14030, uh, specifically how it has prompted two FAR cases uh, to be opened and are currently progressing, starting with FAR case 2021-016. This is about minimizing the risk of climate change in federal acquisitions. 
Uh, Section 5B of the EO directs the FAR Council to consider, the FAR Council is the body that manages the FAR. I'm sure you figured that out. Um, it directs the FAR Council to consider amending the federal acquisition regulation to ensure that major federal agency procurements minimize the risk of climate change, including requiring the social costs of greenhouse gas emissions to be considered in procurement decisions and, where appropriate and feasible, give preference to bids and proposals from suppliers with a lower social cost of greenhouse gas emissions. The second FAR case prompted by Executive Order 14030 is FAR case 2021-015 entitled Disclosure of GHG Emissions and Climate-Related Financial Risk. This case is being uh, developed um, in response to Section 5B of the Executive Order, which directs the FAR Council to consider amending the FAR to require major federal suppliers to publicly disclose greenhouse gas emissions and climate-related fin financial risks and to set science-based reduction targets. So that covers kind of the dynamic policy environment at, in terms of executive orders and open FAR cases. I do also want to highlight a couple of GSA-level policies that have been issued recently so you can get a sense of how GSA is um, implementing these executive orders, starting with GCM case 138, which was issued on October 22nd, 2021. This incorporated new sustainability requirements into the GSA acquisition manual, which, which we call the, the GSAM. So the, the changes ask contracting officers to consider environmental, environmental implications during acquisition planning. Um, so basically, the contracting officer is encouraged to strategize with the program manager to consider the most environmentally preferable solutions for the government. Uh, the policy goes on to call out some of these um, solutions, which includes the use of eco labels, uh, waste sourcing efficiency and content management uh, services, and also, of course, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it tells contracting officers to consider practices and strategies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions such as operational emissions, embodied carbon, transportation, and logistics costs. Uh, outside of the acquisition planning phase of the acquisition life cycle, uh, the policy asks that COs promote the use of sustainable solutions during contract administration and ask COs to examine environmental outcomes versus price alone. Another Acquisition policy to be aware of was issued on November 2nd. That is GSA, um, or it was issued by the GSA Se Senior Procurement Executive, um, Acquisition Letter MV21-10. So this uh, acquisition letter focuses on developing innovative approaches to sustainability and asks that FAS and PBS, PBS is the other side of GSA, Public Building Services, ask that they identify procurements where innovative approaches to sustainability can be incorporated into the procurement. So it gives examples of innovation uh, that can be used, and that includes things like requiring contractors to price out total life cycle costs as part of their price proposals. So an example of this would be a uh, uh, total life cycle cost would be if you buy something with energy efficiency, you would incorporate any energy savings into the total life cycle costs uh, for purposes of price evaluation. Another innovative, innovative practice called out is the use of environmental evaluation factors, regional sourcing, and assessing contractor corporate policies, which it calls out um, corporate policies that include the company's greenhouse gas emission statement, incorporating that into the process. So this, as you can see, was issued relatively recently. Again, this is being recorded on December 13th. So it is in the process of being implemented, but FAST and PBS have already submitted several acquisitions uh, that are using innovative sustainability approaches. And we expect more to uh, be submitted over time. One approach that FAST is using that you should be aware of is, um, at least for certain major acquisitions, is to require uh, greenhouse management considerations as a post-award deliverable. So basically to understand and reduce the energy and environmental impacts of the products and services we're buying, large contractors may be required to submit as a post-award deliverable, 
a greenhouse gas inventory, a greenhouse gas reduction target, and report on their progress towards achieving the greenhouse gas reduction target over time. So again, this would only apply for certain major acquisitions, uh, typically apply to large contractors. And as you can see, it is a post-award approach where a GHG inventory and reduction target and uh, reporting out on progress would occur as a post-award deliverable. So that is it. There's a lot of policy that has been thrown at you, starting from statutes to regulations to executive orders to agency level policy. Um, so I can understand if your head is spinning. Uh, there were a lot of climate policies issued in FY21, and there may be, you know, expect more in FY22. Uh, so since this is a dynamic environment, you're encouraged to stay informed as it progresses. Uh, so look out for any new executive orders issued that uh, impacts how great. Greenhouse gases are considered in the acquisition process. Keep an eye on these FAR cases, 2021-15 and 16. Uh, you can track open FAR cases at this link provided on the slide. And also, if you have any, you know, if you do business with GSA, you know, keep a look at GSA policies. Or if you have um, business with another agency, look at what they are issuing on this subject as well. Uh, and that includes sustainability plans that all agencies are required to submit annually, as well as climate risk management plans. So thank you very much for listening. You should now be familiar with the current policy landscape, current as of December 13th, 2021, I'll say it for the last time, uh, regarding greenhouse gas management in federal acquisition. On the next recordings, subject matter experts from EPA will, uh, on the second recording, explain the greenhouse gas inventory development process and provide associated EPA resources. And on the third and final recording, identify opportunities to begin reducing your greenhouse gas emissions. So thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next recording.